We talked about the four angels who were released to kill a third of mankind. Now this is different, of course, from the rider on the red horse, which, we, in, which rider we encountered early on um, as, the, seven, as the, the first four seals uh, were opened and the revelation of that which had been sealed, which was held in the hand of the Lamb who sat upon the throne, just to go back into some of these teachings that have preceded. Um, This is different. That that spirit right on on the uh, red horse stirred men up against each other to kill each other. Now, but a third of mankind killed in a combination of things found here constituting the second woe. And we know that because in verse 16, I left left the last broadcast by saying, we have not looked at how the third of mankind was killed. We want to do that now. And in verse 16 he says, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them." And then he goes on to describe the horsemen and and, and I'll just read that portion of it. Uh, Now the number of the army of the horsemen, 200 million, I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, those who sat on them that had, uh, those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone." Fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed. And he reiterates, by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power was in their mouths and in their tails, and their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm." All right, now let's go back though earlier on in chapter 9 and we will look at these horses and uh, they really connect directly to uh, the verse 7 of uh, chapter 9 which says, the shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle and on their heads were crowns of something like gold. Faces were like the face of men, they had women's hair, their teeth were lion's teeth, and they had breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, and they had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. They were given power to hurt men for five months. And they had over them the king of the abyss, they had over them king, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek has the name Apollyon. Now, so these these horses or these locusts shaped like horses come out and their first order is to torment mankind for five months and to do so, and it specifically references their teeth like lion's teeth um, and so on. Now in that administration it would appear that the one directing their activities 
was the angel of the abyss. So the angel of the abyss, Abaddon uh, in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek, had a limited power and limited to direct them. And that was for uh, a period of five months. Now, the same company is under the control of these four angels who have been bound until such a time. The number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, I heard the number of them. And they now have a different mandate after tormenting, they now kill. Now what you would say, why? If you're going to kill them, why don't you just kill them? Why do you torment them first for five months and then kill them? Kill a third. In this we see the staged mercy of God. It is always true that when a civilization becomes so corrupt that the mercy of God is not extended in the form of loving kindness and tender mercies. At that point, you see, God means to shake everything that can be shaken so that if there is a remnant that can be saved out of them, He'll save them. This is the severe mercy of God. This is the fierce majesty of God. Every time this has ever happened, only a remnant was saved. In the days of Noah, unto which these things are likened, as it was in the days of Noah, a whole population saw Noah build the ark for 120 years and God's mercy was 420 years while the ark was being prepared. But the day that the deluge came, a whole different revealing of the fierce wrath of God was now the order of the day. But the Bible says concerning that 120 years, it says it this way, while the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. So the mercy of God does not first kill, it, tor- it allows for the torment. And there's a limited administration of these creatures under the rule of Abaddon and in Greek, Apollyon. But then when it moves to the sixth woe, these horses and their riders, the horsemen, now are in numerous company and they are meant to do a very different kind of harm. I'd like to comment just briefly on the 200 million. Let me say that um, when, when you look this up in the Greek, the word million does not appear. It's thousands and tens of thousands. So the highest number that the ancients could count to and conceive of was, the, was a thousand. 
So a, a, a thousand times a thousand, ten, time, ten thousand times ten thousand, those are the typical references. And the number spoken of here is uh, 200 million. A thousand million is a billion. Um, the number of the horsemen was 200 million. So the translators simply used current mathematical um, understandings to talk about it. But it's interesting because 200 million has at least two other references, previous references in Scripture. One of them is uh, Psalm 68, and it says, verse 11 of Psalm 68, the Lord God gave the word, the, the Lord gave the word, great was the company, let me go back to that, The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those who proclaim it. Uh, kings of armies flee at, uh, and he and she who divides, um, uh, let, let me go back here, uh, here we are, I'm sorry, verse 17, I started at 11 but I should have started at 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. So 20,000 times thousands of thousands. The, the calculus is that it's 200 million. And then in, uh, also in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 7, verse 10, we also have this number again, Daniel 7, 10. A fiery stream Speaking of God's throne, it says, His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fire issued and came forth from Him, a thousand thousands ministered to Him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before Him. The court was seated and the books were opened. So it seems like, and this by the way is in the context of God judging the nations, uh, and, 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 and specifically being Daniel 7, it's a reference to this creature that Daniel had seen in his vision, actually of four creatures, but in reference to the fourth creature, uh, that had seven heads and ten horns, and when this creature was being judged, the court was set and God was attended by uh, two times ten, thousand times a thousand, uh, as, as the reference indicates, to the number of two hundred million people, or two hundred million attended God. So. Whether this is an actual number or not is not so much the point. It is that it has its antecedent in prophetic scriptures, which is to say a vast inescapable army. In this case, as in every case, subject to the control of the angel who is announcing these things, and in turn, the angel is subject to the control 
of the voice from, uh, from the golden altar. Now I'll move on. I simply wanted to show you the, the very point I've made before, which is this, that there is always a circular reference to the thing. It comes around multiple times so that if something is lacking in our understanding within a particular context, we can go back to the prior uh, non-apocryphal context and learn about what God means by those things that He says less um, in a less obscure fashion. That's the intent. That's the intent of God for us in regards to the things mentioned multiple times that come around and have their references in prophetic scripture. Let's go on. <clears throat> Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. He saw the horses and then those who sat on them, so the riders on the horses, before he simply described the horses, but now he's describing the riders, had breastplates, by the way earlier on it was said the breastplates were made of iron, but they, they had different colors to them. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone." Now previously he had said they had faces like a man, but now apparently the faces was, were the front parts of heads that looked like the heads of lions. Interestingly, what came out of their mouths, out of their mouths came fire, smoke and brimstone, was exactly and by the way, it's what comes out of their mouths that are these plagues by which the third of mankind is killed, by the fire, the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths, that's verse 18. But you will notice something here and that is the red fiery red, that's a reference to fire, red like fire. Hyacinth blue is a very dark blue and smoke is commonly seen as dark blue smoke. Sometimes it's black, but here it is that dark blue and Sulfur is typically yellow and the reference to sulfur then is captured in the line below, fire, smoke and brimstone. Brimstone is what the ancients called uh, the volcanic, uh, the, the sulfuric uh, plumes that came out of a volcano erupting. The judgment of God then comes in the form of fire, smoke and toxic fumes. And the riders on the horses apparently are arrayed according to the particular plague that the horse on which they sit represents. Here is the combination of the demonic 
working within the measures of human order and human society. So there are things that are recognizable like, uh, and it simply says, those who sat on them. It doesn't say men, it simply says those who sat on them. So the demonic that rides these horses is a picture less of people charging into battle as the imagery suggests and more the manner in which these plagues affect humankind. They come out of their mouths. So fire, fiery red, burns up, consumes. In that sense, since these are judgments upon mankind, it devours their reality, it devours their sense of being in control. See, humans want to be in control. It's analogous to, and only analogous to, how the fire judges the works of man in the day when God calls the works of man into judgment. If we've done well, our labors will survive the fire in the fashion in which gold survives the fire, silver and precious stones which are formed under pressure and in heat. So that which is gold, silver, precious stones survives the fire. That which is wood, hay and stubble is consumed by the fire and some are said to be saved in those environments as one escaping through the flames, which is to say that when all the works are judged and the foolishness and folly that consumed the pursuits of man, which constituted the pursuits of man and consumed their time and their resources, when those things are revealed for the worthlessness that they are, a few will escape as though escaping through the flames. This is that imagery. Instead of purifying the people of God and or vindicating those who have been faithful so that their works are compared to gold, silver and precious stones, this is about the world and there's nothing to be saved out of it. So it's really a destruction of of the pride of man, it's a destruction of what they put their trust in. Uh, And the Bible speaks of this time as the hearts of men failing them for fear. Because if you have, if what you've built your life trying to, trying to get, trying to acquire, trying to define yourself through those uh, resources and those um, accretions in your life, these spirits have the capacity to devour them in a fiery red haze. Hyacinth blue is about obscuring the truth as in smoke. We often refer to the term blue smoke and mirrors to suggest the unsubstantial nature of things. There are two distinctly, characteristically different kinds of smoke. One form of smoke that that represented the Holy Spirit coming into the temple, obscuring the senses, requiring you to be able to operate in the Spirit. The priest when the Temple of Solomon was dedicated, the priests were required to operate in a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. 
Not so here. Hyacinth blue, that thick blue smoke, will cause men to have no confidence in anything that they normally place their confidences in, in their knowledge, in their understanding, in their contacts, in their abilities to negotiate, in the rest of it. This is a, this is a level of uh, robbery of mankind that is really, it's like losing your way in a burning building because of smoke and the inhalation of smoke, uh, obscuring your vision. And finally, sulfur yellow. Toxic fumes asphyxiate quickly, burns the lungs, burns the throat, burns the eyes. So you cannot breathe, you can't swallow, you can't see. That's the picture here. These aren't just colors of the, you know, sparkling, splendid, splendid colors. These are elements of destruction and they're called plagues, plagues, much like the reference to plagues in Egypt and it comes out of their mouths, which is to say these are word-based plagues. These are plagues that come because of the words that are spoken. And I, I quickly to hurry to the end of this, so these demonic spirits speak lies and hypocrisy to people who have their consciences seared with a hot iron. Again, I, I remind you, go back and look at Timothy where he speaks about the conditions of men in the last days, lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves, haters of God, despite, despisers of good, proud, arrogant, the rest of it, truce breakers and so on. These are the things that absolutely eviscerate human population. And the, the final piece is for them, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. Why? Because their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm. This is like uh, the serpent coming into the garden. So they speak with their mouths, but they speak in a serpentine way. The entire thing about them is deception. So they kill and do immeasurable harm to a third of mankind by taking full advantage of the debauchery and the shameless condition into which the world has, has pl been plunged. This is the pit of despair. This is where God gives men over as He did in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. He gives them over to their lust to do the things that were not convenient. This is the stuff spoken of in the book of, uh, of Romans, the first chapter. Listen, people think that today because you can make a Twitter-based argument for any vile and contemptible practice that you want to and get away with it seemingly, that only works because you don't choose to retain God in your knowledge. It doesn't mean it works, it works temporarily, but that is the very thing that these horses and their riders, the demonic combination, of fire, smoke, and toxic fumes. That's what it represents. You know, whoever thinks that these things were fulfilled a long time ago would have a hard time explaining how things are going to end in a society in which evil has ripened to the point where men call evil good and call good evil. There was never a time in the world where all of that has been judged so decisively.
The end of the age is when it's judged decisively. Yes, there have been uh, occurrings of this when Rome became so corrupt, there was a judgment of it and it fell. Other civilizations, similar things, but we're talking about a third of mankind and at a time when evil has ripened. It's the condition of mankind that allows for these spirits to be so effective and God is simply giving mankind over to the choice that He has made. And this is before the great white throne judgment. This has to do with the judgment of their flesh. This does not have to do with the judgment of their souls. That is to come at the great white throne. But the judgment of the flesh even as fierce as it is, up to and, and, and including a third of the population, it is so that if possible, those who might be saved, seeing the destruction of these times, seeing the hopelessness of these times, that they might apply to the Lord to rescue them out of the kingdoms of darkness. We'll continue just briefly to summarize this when we come back. I'm Sam Sol and we'll see each other then. Bye-bye.